can rudraksh be used for black magic no because rudraksha is a manifestation through shiva himself when it comes to rudraksh we are talking about energy here yeah, it is so true. when you say positive that'll also be negative right is it okay to have sex while wearing rudraksh the answer would be no can women wear rudraksh while they menstruate yes to answer your question women can wear rudraksh in their cycles if they had already worn the rudraksh before the fact nepali rudraksh always has natural hold you how? don't even need to be drill a hole that's how nature makes rudraksh yeah. if i make you fearful if i tell you oh my god kriti now for two years this bad things are going to happen where it our culture is more driven towards fear invoking and giving a solution which is ultimately going to bring you back to i do have customers who are scientists they're biochemical scientists they're leading researches in the field of cancer i have customers actually who have worked on nasa these people understand where spirituality begins is where science is right now ending i don't see like any like extreme scientists denying the existence of like god or anything there there's always a possibility that's what science says i think spiritual aspect is something beyond that it's not like science can't figure it out it hasn't yet it yeah. may in the future cried out so loud i i was you know saying these things in my mind uh, i had around like 12000 subscribers with me the next day uh, one of my videos started going viral the next week i was it i had around like uh, 4 lakh subscribers the incident i told you about it was on last february and february 12th exactly i got monetized and this february i hope i'll touch 2 million you still need to work you can't sit down and wear rudraksh mm. and say okay now everything is done let's go about it Today's podcast is with Shukritya Kadivada, a third generation Rudraksha expert and a Vedic astrologer. I was someone who was wearing Rudraksha in my college days, obviously without much knowledge about it. So when I got a chance to meet someone who has an expertise in Rudraksha, I obviously had a lot of questions. This is one of my well done podcasts for sure and I really hope you all like it too. Hi. Hi Kirti how are you I'm good I'm good how are you I'm doing good as well So it's been really long since I did a podcast and this is my first time I'm sitting in Nepal and I'm doing in Nepal uh, so I'm really excited about this So I'm going to start with one thing that's really bothering me since I met you why are you wearing rudraksh in your hand and also I I have heard people saying that you shouldn't be wearing rudraksh anywhere other than your neck it's kind of disrespectful So since you're a Rudraksh expert and you're wearing it in your hand and it's really been bothering me I want to know why So that's first and foremost welcome to Nepal I'm Thank so you. glad that your Rudraksh journey your Rudraksh quest has led you to Nepal <laughs> and I'm able to talk to you here uh, yes so that's one of the main reasons I wanted to talk to you is to break myths like this one so according to the shiva purana on the ch- 23rd chapter we start reading about rudraksha and up until 25th chapter the rudraksha the shiva purana talks exclusively about rudraksha and one of the things that is mentioned there is if a person is wearing a rudraksha on its in his wrist mm-hmm. which is visible he is equal to rudra he is as equal in power to rudra and you should salute a person that is wearing such i'm i'm not saying that i'm you know salutable or <laughs> rudra in any way but wearing rudraksha the amount of rudraksha recommended for a person to wear is around 100000 if we just go through puranas there is no way a person can fit 100000 rudrakshas on his neck so there is different mantras in terms of rudraksha for the forehead mm-hmm. rudraksha for your chest rudraksha for your wrist and rudraksha throughout the body okay. so therefore Yes this is I'm I'm so glad that you started in this question because that is one of the greatest myths that is out there so rudraksha can be worn anywhere as long as it is touching your body we have to understand rudraksha is not a jewelry it's not worn for fashion it is a spiritual tool for transformation so like i say it's a sadhan for sadhana to be done mm-hmm. therefore wearing rudraksha the only thing that you need to be mindful of is rudraksha needs to touch your bare skin how about i'm sorry okay how about you wearing it in your legs ankles so ankles and would that be like disrespectful that would i think be disrespectful uh-huh. uh, but you know to wear 100000 uh, rudrakshas shiva we can see him wearing rudrakshas all around mm-hmm. but we are not him in any yeah. way shape or form so i would restrain rudraksha from going below the uh, hips 
stomach navel okay. area so anywhere above the navel you can wear rudraksha mm-hmm. so that would be my recommendation is to always go above the uh, stomach area for any rudraksha to be worn okay you said you are rudraksha expert and i've done some research you are in your third generation your grandfather your grandfather was the same your father was like expert in rudraksha and you are doing the same thing you are in your 20s and you have like so much knowledge i can understand that it comes from your family but still like this vedic astrology uh, like what is actually rudraksha expert what what it's just a seed what can be you know what is that to be an expert in that yes so that's exceptional question again when we look at rudraksha from a distance mm-hmm. it looks like a seed but when we go deeper into rudraksha if you look at the people who do sadhana with rudraksha and rudraksha is the journey of rudraksha begins from the start of time so we we see mentions there is not a single tool other than rudraksha which was manifested by shiva himself for spiritual transformation of a person so rudraksha has a long history however in if we just look at it from a distance it is a seed as you go deeper the mukhis the energy the use of rudraksha varies from person to person it requires i would say exceptional knowledge a lot of you know uh, vedic knowledge as well in terms of astrology and also genuine interest and inclination towards shiva in order for one to be called a expert i would not consider myself to be a expert i'm still a learner i'm learning rudraksha i don't think i can learn this in my lifetime it's it's so vast but i would at least be uh, you know i would at least feel myself to be successful if i can share 5% of what i learn in terms of rudraksha and help people transform in their sadhanas and spiritual journey i would consider my job done if we if i can reach that point and you said mukhis uh, i heard like there are a lot of varieties types in rudraksha like this i think one mukhi i don't know how you call that and i used to wear rudraksha in my college days so i wore this oh, the five faces one mm-hmm. so would you like to break it down like how many types of rudraksha is there like like how do you classify it yeah so rudraksha can range from one mukhi up until we have seen up to 29 mukhi rudraksha 29 okay. okay and as the mukhi progresses the rarity of the rudraksha increases from 1 through 14 mukhi it is known as the siddha mala in mm-hmm. which all the planets are you know uh, taken care of the one mukhi is a exceptionally rare rudraksha the rudraksha originates from nepal indonesia and india okay the nepali rudrakshas are the rudraksha used for spiritual reasons the indonesian rudrakshas are the ones used for jewelries the one mukhi rudraksha from uttarakhand that is produced is not considered to be rudraksha but is sold in the market as a one mukhi kaju a mm-hmm. uh, one mukhi comes in four different varieties primarily the one is the one mukhi nepali round which is the rarest a one mukhi nepali round is virtually impossible to find second one is a one mukhi moon shape from nepal which is also a rare rudraksha it's the one mukhi that is used on the pashupatinath indramala the third one uh, would, sorry to interrupt yes uh when i was doing this you know i was just checking out about rudraksha since yeah. i'm talking to you yeah, yeah, yeah. i've seen a rudraksha priced at 3 lakh rupees like in some website yeah i actually want to know is it like the rarity you're talking about is it actually a thing or is just marketing like giving some all like yes so that is a question that i get a lot uh in nepal the nepali rudrakshas are rarer than i would say diamonds because a diamond you know uh if you go to a diamond place you are pretty much guaranteed to find a diamond the cost you might have to bear yeah but rudraksha is a natural product you mm-hmm. cannot predict the mukhis that are going to be grown in a single year mm-hmm. and no one if anyone claims that they have a farm and they are cultivating rudraksha from a farm either they are shiva or they are lying because they cannot how can you predict what mukhis a particular tree is going to produce okay so as the mukhis go higher you find up to like for example a 21 mukhi 
you will find not more than three to four of Nepali twenty one mukhi in the entire in the Nepal entire Nepal in a given year, and the demand for Nepali twenty one mukhi is exceptionally high because it's a powerful rudraksha for kubera for manifestation and for wealth fulfillment, which ultimately leads you towards spiritual growth. Okay, okay? I, I have this thing. Is the demand, you know, is the price high because of the demand, and the number of supply is also very less. Yes. Or is it because have a low, actually have like that kind of benefits that it climbs? I would say both. Okay. The first is you know the benefits of Rudraksha cannot be described by humans. Uh -huh. It is, you know, it is according to the Devi Bhagavat Purana, even mere sight of a Rudraksha is enough to. take rid of all the karmic debt a person has in their given lifetime we cannot comprehend that for us looking at a rudraksha bead how can that be so beneficial but that's yeah. what our puranas say and claim wearing rudraksha the benefit and the results of rudraksha can only be found by people who have actually worn it right so if you have worn a rudraksha you will be able to tell the significance of it the energy of it it cannot be described by me without you wearing one but to answer your question about what is determining the price is it the rarity or is it the benefit i think the demand is created because of the benefit the reason okay. people are coming towards rudraksha and nepali rudraksha in particular is because of the transformation that it guarantees you and the demand is high for that reason but the supply is low because it's all natural mm. you can't man make rudrakshas in a factory to cater towards demand i in think a, it's happening now yes so Fake rudrakshas are very much prevalent in today's day in the secondary market. Yeah, in a because primary whenever you know you talk about rudraksh, the first thing will be like authenticity. Is it like authentic one? Like how do you decide this authenticity? Like where is the meter? How do you set this? Because anywhere it's a seed. Yeah. Uh, it can be fake only if it's made. Uh, you know, by humans in some plastic or some anything. But mm. you, I, I think you can spot it easily. Yes. I'm not an expert, obviously, but I feel like you can spot it easily. You can correct. easily spot the difference between a seed and a plastic. Right? Correct. Correct. So that is fake news that you know there is plastic rudrakshas mm -hmm. being made. The the fakeness or the manipulation happens in the mukhi mm -hmm. for example it's a five mukhi mm -hmm. if a human interferes and cuts and carves a mukhi on it which is a sin of the highest nature in according to our sanatana dharma and hinduism when you touch and manipulate a rudraksha that's the highest sin however it is being done for money now how do you test it a rudraksha expert or an expert laboratory which are there for example an irl lab or IGL lab in India. These are labs that you know are there to test rudrakshas. Mm -hmm. That can be done. Secondly, you X-ray test rudraksha. The number of mukhis is always consistent with the number of compartments within the rudrakshas. So if you X-ray examine it and there is only five compartment, but you can see six mukhis. you are pretty much guaranteed that someone craved it mm. right so that's the reason i you know tell people to educate themselves in terms of rudraksha second you have to be cautious of the secondary market you have to buy rudraksha from a reputable source which at least provides you with the certification for example in nepal rudraksha what we have done to counteract this is we provide X-ray reports of each and every rudraksha you buy from us, wow. and we are the only vendor in the entire world. And I say this with pride, not ego, that provides lifetime money back authenticity guarantee on each and every rudraksha sold. So, what, what do you mean by lifetime money back? Like, if I so don't like it, I can just give it back. That is that is a change of mind. <laughs> okay. But if in any case. in an unlikely circumstance you come across a lab for example kirti buys a rudraksha from nepal rudraksha and after 5 years she is walking down the street in delhi and she sees a rudraksha lab now she wants to test the rudraksha there and you know the lab says oh my god kirti you have been fooled and this is a fake rudraksha there is no one you can call at that time in the other areas but with nepal rudraksha we are giving you a lifetime guarantee that you can test your our rudraksha in 162 labs worldwide and we guarantee it to be authentic we will bear the cost of everything and we will also give you your money back if that happens it has never happened by the grace of lord shiva and i don't expect it to happen because authenticity is the number one priority for us but it's always a good thing because i want to tell this 
your sadhana starts when your questions and your doubts end you can't be doubting the tool that you're wearing for sadhana and get results because your mind will always automatically go towards is it fake or real right mm. so to help people focus on what is important which is their sadhana which is their transformation we have built this system to ensure that you know you are at least at peace of mind that you are wearing the real thing and would you like to continue the types of gudaks i am sorry i interrupted <laughs> yeah no 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 that's perfectly fly, fine so like i said the one mukhi is a rare one uh, it comes in like nepali form there is savar and mm-hmm. one mukhi moon shape we'll show your audience the pictures of this yeah, it'll we'll be easy it. for them to understand and then there's also the indonesian type and the I- indian type these are not spiritually significant but mm-hmm. used uh, because they are cost effective for vendors to use it okay, okay. the two mukhi is for chandrama is a one of the strongest rudraksha for chandrama chandrama in the sense moon, moon so okay. moon is a very important planet mm-hmm. it is a planet that takes care of your emotion and it's also the planet that represents shiva mm. therefore people who are facing malefic effect of the moon one have debilitated moon or want to strengthen their moon they go for the two mukhi rudraksha the rudra- and also like i heard that uh I've heard people saying that if you wear the two mukhi rudraksha, like both husband and wife, your bonding will be much stronger. That is absolutely correct because oh. it is also a Ardha Narishwar rudraksha. Okay, I thought it's fake. It is Ardha Narishwar, meaning the husband and wife. Mm-hmm. It's the half Shiva, and yeah, yeah, half Parvati. So therefore, Shankar and Parvati. Yes. Shiva, when he is with Shakti, is Shankar. Yeah. So Shiva. Shankar and Parvati, it's Ardhanareshwar. So yes, two mukhi bonds it. From three to seven mukhi, we see Rudrakshas that are used primarily for japa. Okay, these are not Rudrakshas that people commonly wear individually. Mm-hmm. These are japa Rudraksha. Like I said, I want to break down a little bit. Rudraksha is a tool that is used in three ways. Mm-hmm. First is through sight. Even looking at a Rudraksha is a punya karma. Second one is through wearing. Third one is through japa. Okay, japa is the recitation of mantras for a prolonged number of time for spiritual growth. So the mukhis from three to seven is used for the japa. From eight mukhi, you start seeing rudraksha for Ganesha, which is for Ketu. Nine mukhi is for Rahu because it's for Devi. Ten mukhi, you see rudraksha for Vishnu. It's a rudraksha that is also, you know. most of my clients put it in their houses in their offices for vastu as well 11 is for rudra for vairav as well it's for protection 12 is for surya 13 is for venus 14 is for shani 15 is for mercury 16 is for mahamrityunjaya form of shiva it's for rahu as well as it's a uh, rudraksha for well being 17 is one of the most famous rudrakshas in the entire world uh, known for vishwakarma it's a rudraksha used for transformation in business and financial oh. growth 18 is for bhumi it's a gayatri rudraksha people doing gayatri sadhana which is one of the toughest kind of sadhana what used, is that gayatri so sadhana means the gayatri mantra is a very strong mantra i can't recite it in front of you because it's a mantra that is yeah, recited yeah i know gayatri within. mantra but never heard about the sadhana no. so anything that is done with a purpose for a long period of time with utmost discipline as a sadhana it's a very simple way for you to comprehend what a sadhana is mm-hmm. doing a gayatri mantra just once is a act but act meaning a thing that you have done it's beneficial but it's not a sadhana but if you say okay i'm going to do 108 japas of gayatri for a prolonged number of time until i you know fulfill these things and these are the things that i want to do it's it should be a planned disciplined act that is a sadhana sadhana doing sadhana is very difficult because it requires you to be disciplined first second it requires you to have that constant focus and activation yeah. so 18 mukhi is a rudraksha for mangal it's a rudraksha for mars and a rudraksha for gayatri so that you know foundation of spirituality is built through wearing the 18 mukhi rudraksha and doing the gayatri sadhana the 19 mukhi here we are talking about very rare rudraksha okay i'm talking about it very you know casually because you know uh, i want to tell you the information in a casual way but as i'm progressing in the mukhis you are finding less and less of these rudrakshas okay. so very rare okay you need to be fortunate in spirituality and materially to be able to get these rudrakshas 
from 19 mukhi you are looking at rudraksha for sudarshana chakra it's a rudraksha for vishnu so mercury it's the highest powerful rudraksha for mercury from 20 you are looking for rudraksha for brahma 21 i already told you is a kuber rudraksha and so on and so forth there are rudraksha so many rudrakshas that are still happening because we need to understand this purana is not ended life or the world is not ended the universe is still expanding and still growing spirituality is a growing and a happening process okay we treat it as a history which we re- refer back to and learn but spiritual transformation spiritual growth and spiritual progress is happening today so if you do a sadhana and if you are spiritually enlightened enough you have the ability and the authority to add to our spirituality and make it beautiful that is how our upanishads were written it is all a dialogue of the saints after they read the vedas and they went on deep meditation they you know researched on their sleep they introspected and they wrote the upanishads today we're not doing that we're too afraid to even touch our books too afraid to even touch expand on our knowledge like money making machines yeah. nowadays so in spirituality it's a happening process and rudraksha is a happening process as well right so who knows some there there might be a 30 mukhi rudraksha and it will be destined to someone and they will know what the spiritual significance for that will be but until then we don't know okay you you just broke down that what kind of rudraksha gives what kind of benefits yes so i have this silly question i know it's very silly but i'll just going to go with it like the person na he has the like tree or that rudraksh he finds this rarest rudraksh and it's going to give him a lot of benefit why is he selling it instead of keeping it with him so that it gives him all that benefit see so that is a very good question and a tricky <laughs> question as well right so the the first thing is everyone in the world is a medium yeah. and i am a medium as well i have a lot of rudrakshas i can wear every one of them and receive all the benefit myself but my purpose as a human existence is yes i do wear a lot of rudrakshas you will see farmers in nepal wear a lot of rudrakshas for themselves but they can't be you know in spirituality begins when selfishness ends it's a tool for transformation of not just for me but for world mm-hmm. okay the reason i am being a medium to put rudraksha from point a to point b is because i personally believe my family is chosen by lord shiva to do so we do wear rudrakshas we do wear rudraksha for our personal transformation but guarding that you know thing and making it a secret and just using it for myself would be one of the most selfish act as a spiritual being calling myself spiritual and uh, hiding my mantras there has been a there has been a trend in a lot of unfortunately a lot of spiritual practices there will be gurus who are not letting go of their mantras until their last breath the only person who knows the mantra is their son and that's how the family tradition moves forward right but definitely true that spirit, is in spirituality yeah, true spirituality is there where you put others in front of yourself yes you do need to you are responsible as a human being to cater towards yourself but the responsibility towards the world and spiritual transformation of others is also your responsibility so i personally believe to be a farmer especially of rudraksha is also a destiny and like i said darshan of a rudraksha is punya karma in itself so just imagine being able to live on the boundary whether that person realizes it at that moment is a question but if we look at the puranic you know uh, knowledge and if you look at it in a deeper level than what you can just see it's a huge ben, you know huge boon to have been born in that place for him since we are talking about spirituality i have this question like uh if you see the literatures and scriptures of our culture mm-hmm. there's always you know it it's highly spiritually inclined one mm-hmm. you know i believe earlier back back in those days even the common people everybody used to wear rudraksha because it's like that's how you know when I, when you read the scriptures and all always the main characters has some you know some mentions of these kind of things yes. like people were highly spiritually inclined yes nowadays we are not doing it but do you feel that we can why do you think 
people stop wearing gutaksh the common people i'm not talking about the sanyasis or somebody it's like me so a person like me i was never told by my parents to wear gutaksh or anything my parents never i i never seen them wearing gutaksh when i started wearing it they were actually against it yeah so like why do you think people stop doing it nowadays so there is three things i want to answer here the first is rudraksh is still worn by a lot of people mm-hmm. you know no but these people who are on their highly successful ranks and mm-hmm. you know attaining success they are energy harvesters they are using forms of energies to harvest their goals okay so there is happening today Mm-hmm. So, however, you are. But also, I'm not talking about yeah. these people. You're talking about they are like highly conscious of their doings. Yes, yes. But like, I, like I'm a commoner. Like yeah. I'm not like a very For ritualistic a, person. But I'm like a commoner who I'm doing much just day to day things. Yes. But we don't get these. Car- I don't feel the like the necessity or importance. Co- I don't actually know. Don't know the significance of it. Correct. So our uh, times, and this is very unfortunate, is ruled by. uh fear rather than knowledge you're yeah. fearful True. of doing anything yeah, you said yeah. you were wearing rudraksha yes. but you stopped because you were afraid of negative things happening i uh, no no it's actually not it kind of got broke down since i bought it i wore it for some uh, for a long time i i was wearing it for like almost 3 years okay. and it got broken down then i stopped it because i i didn't buy anything new yeah. but if i consider it like the most important thing the moment it got broken down i would have at least you know yeah. uh, stretch it back and i would have worn it but i didn't do it so yeah. it's like maybe i didn't consider it i didn't value it enough yeah. but why do you think like people like me don't value it enough so that's number one is the lack of knowledge mm, lack sure. of knowledge sure. lack of awareness i doubt that in today's age a lot of people are opening the puranas and reading it you are getting more information from a mediator like myself rather than reading it yourself right if you read it and you uh, believe it and understand the value you would definitely be wearing it secondly i would also like to say that uh, after the western colonization Rudraksha was very much prevalent in pre- periods days you can see your museums in a lot of places even including dubai the museums have rudraksha malas worn by kings of tamil nadu kings yeah, of yeah, or, you know uh, but after the western colonization we are believing in gemstones and other tools which ah. are which are spiritual but nothing like rudraksha so it's a lost uh, tool for sadhana and that is kali yuga right Kali Yuga is all about evaporation of knowledge, and we're seeing it in Rudraksha as well. Okay, I was searching about Rudraksha online, and yeah. I spotted a lot of weird questions, <laughs> like extremely weird questions. But some are not that weird, but <laughs> some are like extremely weird questions. Yeah. And I also think it makes sense to some extent. Yeah. So I want you to answer these questions in one word, a maximum in one sentence. Okay. Have you heard of this rapid fire thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like. It's not like exactly the current Johar rapid fire, but it's like kind of slightly like that. Okay, okay? Uh, I'm gonna read it out. Sure. Number one is Rudraksh fruit edible? Yes, it is. What? The external, the external the, portion of the you Rudraksh can eat seed, it. You can eat it. Yeah. I wanna eat it. Just get me one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's quite delicious, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah. How does it uh, taste? It tastes like a berry. Okay. Uh, it's it's a bit bitter. Okay. But it's it's a Uh, we usually eat it after we clean the rudraksha uh-huh. the excess it can be okay know. i was expecting a no for this okay the second one will be can rudraksha increase your sexual desire so it really depends on whether your sacral chakra is blocked if you if there are certain uh, spiritual reasoning for that blockage to happen definitely yes I couldn't get that. Like, what is the blockage? The sacral chakra is the chakra in your reproductive organ. Okay. If you look at sex in a very spiritual angle, it is just an intercourse between two energies. If there is any blockage because of spiritual reasons, or your birth chart is saying something about it, then yes, we can. You know, I have had cases where a uh, sadhana and a spiritual. Uh, you know tool has helped in the process i would still seek medical advice <laughs> but at the same time spiritual because we're ba- made out of material and spirit the spiritual angle of it yes okay got it 
can a non hindu wear gudraksh it's not a weird one but still i just wanted a one word answer for this yes i have a lot of christians a lot of muslim uh, people as well who wear rudraksha for their spiritual and uh, transformation at the end of the day we're all humans great okay the next one is it okay to eat non vegetarian while wearing rudraksh it depends on your culture if you are from a north indian descent you will find that your culture is surrounded with non vegetarian meals is common right? yeah. in nepal we offer even non veg to gods so wow. so it really depends on the cultural thing but the answer is yes to a certain extent in certain culture it is common to wear rudraksha and eat meat that is not a problem okay so it's like it's not restricted or anything right there is no mentions of anything where your meal is associated with spirituality meal is something you are eating for the material fulfillment and material you know uh, strengthening of your body you are mixing two things assuming it's the same so that is very you know very uh, that's a very limited understanding of spirituality when you start seeing you know can i eat rice can i eat grains kind of thing but uh don't you think the body plays an important role too because it, it's your medium where you're spiritual so it does it does and i have seen one thing though i will tell you one thing the inclination to having meat and tamasic substance these are tamasic tamasic substance goes down gr- extraordinarily once a uh, person begins their rudraksha mm-hmm. journey okay that is very common but what i like to say is rudraksha is not for the perfect person but for a person who is in search for perfection so if you're already actually you're right if you're already imperfect and you're then you can't be like okay i'm all ruined now nothing there for me start my suggestion is start and go from there you can slowly change but don't call we like to limit it's a lie we actually, tell actually it's ourselves. true because when i was wearing rudraksh i kind of stopped eating nonish for a year i don't know why but i just didn't like it for yeah. some time ta- okay yeah 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 but i started it again yeah. uh but yeah that's kind of happens the next question will be is it okay to have sex while wearing rudraksh the answer would be no uh, uh people usually remove rudrakshas during an intercourse that oh. is that is what is common but why so is it not a na- you know natural process like it is a, and all it is a natural process i mean you know it would be a personal preference in my opinion it's it's nothing bound by spirituality our spirituality if you look at hinduism it is very much open to sex it's very much open yeah obviously you you f- go to temples in kathmandu yeah. nepal you'll find all the karma sutras everything mentioned because that's a natural process so it depends on i think personal choices if you are okay and if you can separate your spirituality with your material and your process then absolutely fine i see a lot of people feel guilty after the fact oh okay see feel yeah, guilty yeah, yeah. after the fact is like uh, you, you better know, remove it you better remove it if you are going to feel guilty if you have a open mindset if you understand that okay this is also a spiritual process of energy transformation then yes so it would depend on person to person it's not a one word answer unfortunately okay but is it, it's not like there's any restriction or there, something there is not be mention of any restrictions no. okay the next one is can rudraksh be used for black magic no because rudraksha is a manifestation through shiva himself and god can never be a cause or a causation for a negative thing to happen in your life so unlike other yantras of uh, you know various uh, practices which i am not very well versed on rudraksha is not something that you can use to create negative impact for anyone it is always 100% of the time sure positive results never negative Okay so I just picked up picked this question right now uh from the from your answer if you like distract the rudraksha like uh, like the, you said uh some people carve it out and all na so if the rudraksha is distracted in any way like it's kind of damaged uh won't it cause any negative energy because it's all about when it comes to rudraksha we are talking about energy here yeah, so true. when you say positive that will also be negative right so khandit rudraksha is what you are referring to khandit rudraksha is rudraksha that are broken visibly mm-hmm. damaged ha uh-huh. wearing those kind of rudraksha is not recommended mm-hmm. but when i think about wearing rudraksha a person a person of a certain knowledge will never wear a rudraksha which is broken or mm-hmm. in two pieces that is not common so 
if you're wearing a round uh, Nepali Rudraksha that is of a high quality, which has no damages in it, then no, it cannot have negative impact. But if it's a broken Rudraksha, better to put it in a temple or, you know, visa, you can uh, let go of it in Ganga or any river. And So do you think yeah. that's, I mean, I would like to know the best way to discard a Rudraksha because you bought one you it's damaged or you don't want to use it anymore how do you you know discard it there is a couple of ways the okay. first one is you can put it on a temple mm-hmm. okay donate it to a temple that is good because the source ultimately is god and his residence is the temple the second one would be discarding it in your river because river we know is very good for visarjan you do visarjans in temple i mean rivers so be mindful it's a natural product you can do a visarjan of rudraksha in the river itself that would be a only in the running water only in the running water okay. i would not recommend doing it in a lake why why so running waters are considered to be all you know a part of ganga okay and they are all you know rivers are considered to be extremely sacred for our varun varun bhagwan mm-hmm. is river mm-hmm. and he is considered to be the house of all the tirthas when we do uh, for example when you do a rudra visheka you'll have dio kalas and ganesha kalas meaning kalas is where varun bhagwan is water we worship water to pay out tributes to all the tirthas so when you are visarjaning of you know when you do a visarjan of rudraksha you are actually giving the rudraksha to the entire devtas and telling them that okay you know i'm having to let go of this because of certain damages that's that's it okay that's a very respectful way to let go of it rather than throwing it in a garbage can okay I'm again picking a question out of this so i've seen a lot of people disrespecting rudraksha like i mentioned wearing in their ankle and all i don't know like when i you know i get really kind of upset about it since i have like a personal personally have like a lot of respect on it uh, but my friend used to always she used to say like it's just a seed don't you know uh, overthink it but do we really actually see it just as a seed or do you like as an expert in rudraksha and all do you feel like upset or you know when people dis- disrespect it so see there is a saying in hindi mano to bhagwan na mano to patthar so even shivalinga if you look at it a person who's just looking at it in a very you know in a very uh, what do you call it in from distant it looks like a stone ha but it's the life changing shivalinga for some so for some yeah right and for us it's the jyotirlingas right mm-hmm. so the i can't describe the power of shivalinga to you that that would be very very insignificant i am a very insignificant person to be discussing that in front of you but similarly rudraksha for some is the seed that transformed their lives for some it's just a fruit tree right so it really depends on the spiritual awakening of your soul that resides within you i also want to mention this i used to get upset now what i believe in is everyone has their personal relationship with god i am not a mediator of any kind the only thing that i can be responsible is for my act and educating people but even if after all the education and honor information they want to disrespect then i i think it's a lost cause we should you know educate people but not get offended by their actions because i can't How, by the ignorant actions ignorance cannot you know you can't fight ignorance with frustration sure. it's only through education and enlightenment of them that we can fight it so sure. if you see someone doing that rather than being angry and telling them what are you doing i would recommend educating them and asking them you know do you know what you're doing because sometimes they if you know, don't even know what if you is. i mean if you still do it intentionally that's, that's up to you that's like up to you. yeah i that, think the world will, will be a much better place if everybody is aware of this one fact yeah for sure so well, again go back to this rapid fire thing can women wear rudraksh while they menstruate so it's very common for people to not start wearing their first rudraksha during their menstrual cycle because mm-hmm. of the energy imbalances that there are mm-hmm. energy differentiation that there are and introducing a new energy into your body during a menstrual cycle while you menstruate it's it's diff- it's different but after you have worn the rudraksha rudraksha is a yantra it can it should not not need to be removed from your body ever okay 
apart from certain activities like you know when you're going to a funeral for you know god forbid that happens or uh, if you're taking a shower for protection of the quality of rudraksha it's not for spiritual purposes but yes to answer your question women can wear rudraksha while they're in their cycles if they had already worn the rudraksha before the fact yes that's like the most sensible answer i ever heard so good can you drink and smoke while wearing rudraksha so non veg is a culture but smoking and drinking is a choice it is not a culture you your 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 father drank so i drink is not a point non veg i mean smoking smoking and uh, cigarettes are bad for you and i would think that to be a disrespect to your spirit that you maintain the sanctity of the spirit that you maintain and because rudraksha is already a charged substance what i recommend is if you can't help it put it outside of your body while you consume a different substance which has the power to disrupt the stillness of your spirit mm-hmm. and after the fact you can continue wearing it i personally do not like or do not think it to be a respect to our internal spirit to consume any other spirit from externally while wearing rudraksha that's my personal take again has there been any puranic mention of this it has not whether it is because it was such a given thing or whether it is acceptable that is up to you got it the next one will be how do i make a hole in the rudraksha without breaking it this is actually a question i saw online so yeah. don't be mad at me yeah no this is again a miss you know lack of knowledge regarding rudraksha because a nepali rudraksha the number one identifying factor is a nepali rudraksha always has natural hole so you how? don't even need to de- drill a hole that's how nature makes rudraksha like how how like how the nature is knowing that we're going to you know make a mala out of it or not like how it comes with a hole uh, that is that is shiva you need to ask him some day maybe hopefully your I soul i always thought the hole is like man made no nepali rudraksha all the holes are nat- natural but why why it has like is there any like stems going inside or like that so the uh, so that's a very interesting question i have never thought about it like that what i have been limited to is yes rudraksha has a natural hole mm-hmm. but when you look at the structure there is not a stem actually going in i okay. think shiva made it so that we wear it dude wow okay and the final question will be can i exchange my rudraksh mala with my friend rudraksha is passed down through generations for example one of the rudrakshas that i wear i'm wearing right now is from my grandfather the reason it was being passed down is because we same the same gotra mm-hmm. your friend and you might not be sharing the same gotra therefore the karmic debt and the karmic imbalances and the karmic nature of your families might differ mm-hmm. so i would re- i would i would be against rudraksha being shared among friends but in the family it is okay if you're from the same gotra rudraksha can be shared what about the husband wife husband wife share the same gotra after your marriage marriage your gotra changes so lovers can't do it <laughs> yeah not it down guys okay so these are like the weird questions i spotted online there's not much weird i would say these are like people have a lot of questions about rudraksha and there are a lot of myths around it like um, you know even i told you na when i was wearing rudraksha like every person who see me that will be my first identification the girl who wears rudraksha yeah. i'm not even a, like, like a very spiritualistic person like i used to be an atheist actually like growing up all my life so i just thought as someone told me that it gives a lot of positive energy i tried it i kind of felt better so i just kept it with me for a while so it's not like everybody who saw me like that will be my first identification the girl who wears rudraksha and they'll always have something negative to say they'll ha- always say something to discourage me to stop me to f- you know uh, wear that my parents like they were like so mad at me because everybody in the village will be asking my parents like is she is she going to be a sanyasi or something why is she wearing that rudraksha and then they will be like a girl shouldn't be wearing rudraksha because you know obviously we menstruate and there are times like uh, some death happen in our you know uh, in our family like when i go wearing rudraksha they'll be like oh no, you you shouldn't be wearing rudraksha coming to a funeral and there are times it happens like uh, you shouldn't be uh, obviously eating non veg and you shouldn't be like like there are a lot of things i i can't even remember yeah. so there are a lot of myths around rudraksha as an expert in this field 
would you like to address the myths around rudrash and then like break it like this are the actual fact and this is not just a myth so we can have this conversation all day okay. in terms of the myth breaking there is a lot of myth but i think the mindset is what we need to cater here the deeper level is a mindset we look at any kind of spirituality with a no with mm-hmm. a restriction restrictive mind so we're so fearful fear comes when you don't know what is next you're always you don't you you're never fearing a certain situation when you're able to anticipate the next thing fear comes from the unknown fear comes from lack of knowledge and understanding it is very easy for me to be fearful it's very difficult for me to find a shiva purana and read it hmm so what do i do i be fearful and since i am not wearing it and i know that i want to wear it let's see a lot of people want to wear rudraksha and want to see that transformation in themselves they know it but since i am not wearing it i don't want you to wear it so i'll make pass on the fear fear is something that we pass it on no one has come to you and said you know things that uh, like for example wear a rudraksha this is going to happen very less amount of people are positive about it even i see today people who wear rudraksha won't share that they're wearing rudraksha to other person yeah right? because it's like a it's yeah like i a don't want i don't want this un, you know unnecessary yeah. comments yeah and so restrictive mindset needs to be addressed myths it's religion spirituality is very common sense it's a part of life it's a it's how we are born we don't have to over complicate things god is omnipresent he's everywhere he can see you if you think it's there is known as the brahma within there is a brahma within if your brahma if you consult your brahma without any societal interference you just consult your brahma and think about for a while if i wear a rudraksha do you think shiva is going to harm me anyway if you just consult this you'll get an answer immediately you don't even have to research anything but what we're doing is we have really less amount of ability to introspect we don't consult our brahma we go from this is said that that person said that and we move from there so we need to eradicate the fear we need to understand educate ourselves and use the tools that have been worn by our ancestors for the longest of time for spiritual realization our culture used to be much richer spiritual awakening used to be much higher there's a there's a reason we are moving from satya yug to kali yug not the other way around because these kind of fears are having in there are authoritative figure which will even eradicate you know even uh, uh, make you more fearful because the easiest way to convince someone to do something is to invoke fear if i tell you i never tell this to my clients that without wearing wearing rudraksha there is nothing else in your life no rudraksha is a choice do you wish to transform do you wish to wear it there is no negative things happening because you're not wearing it but if i it make it can you, add up it yeah. if i make you fearful if i tell you oh my god kirti now for 2 years this bad things are going to happen wear it ha uh. so our culture is more driven towards fear invoking and giving a solution which is ultimately going to bring you back to me you said that the lack of knowledge instills fear in people yeah. but as an expert as you're saying as an expert what are you doing to you know um educate a create awareness among the people about the rudraksha or like yeah. uh, do you like teach people or is, is it just only for your customers no so knowledge should be free and i always like it like that uh, and even though my contributions might be minuscule when we look at it from a large extent but i believe that every one of us has a responsibility to bring out the knowledge that we have are for example i recently did this documentary of a rudraksha and talked about all the mukhis in that documentary so you know anyone interested can also look at our youtube channels and you will be able to find the links to that documentary another thing that we do personally is on our website you can find re- you know information about all the rudrakshas and i was offering free consultations uh also but because of the sheer amount of demand of people wanting to you know consult i was i thought that the quality would not be up to the mark so right now 
because of a paid consultation we can you know i can guide people personally as well that's something that i'm offering now but i don't know how long i'll be able to do that but at the same time i have my team who's focused on uh, contributing information and knowledge and sharing all the articles that they can uh, but it's not just for sharing and increasing the number of views we work on every single content we produce like it's our first so you produce content too yes we produce wow. contents to help people educate about rudraksha yeah. that's a big thing it is and you pay people for that yes yes wow. we you know it it's an investment mm-hmm. uh, but i believe that it's an investment that helps people educate uh, about the spiritual obviously, significance obviously. of rudraksha and as a family which has been doing this since the late 1960s we were actually the oldest i'm the I am very proud to say that I belong to the oldest family which is associated with Rudraksha period. Okay. So I believe that it's a family responsibility. I'm making my ancestors proud by educating people about Rudraksha. If one more people sir knows about Rudraksha and ultimately becomes a Nepa Rudraksha family member, then I believe that my ancestors will be proud of what I'm doing. Okay. So you're actually younger than me, yeah. but you have literally like I feel so dumb in front of you because you have like more knowledge in terms of spirituality and rudraksha and all. Uh is it coming from your family like I I've read somewhere that your father I mean so your grandfather was the priest in the Pashupatinath temple. Is yeah. it true? So my grandfather was a karmakanda priest in Pashupatinath temple. He What does that exactly mean? It means that if you go to him for rudravishek for puja mm-hmm. any kind of you know uh, spiritual um uh, you know spiritual ceremony he can do it alone so he's he was a, a pandit he was a pandit and he was a vedic practitioner he was a very learned vedic practitioner not i'm i'm not saying this because he's my grandfather but but because he dedicated his life towards spirituality and towards rudraksha so i believe the knowledge that comes to me and this might be a little bit you know uh hard to quantify it is a mix of things that i've learned but things that come naturally to me because i was destined and blessed enough to be born in a family that has been doing this for a long time right so i believe it's bo- both postnatal karma postnatal meaning the karma after birth mm-hmm. the energies that i've put into knowing and learning about this but it's also prenatal karma of my soul which has which has which is very old i like to tell people i'm 24 turning 25 soon <laughs> but the the age of my soul is eternal and the do you believe in the rebirth i do believe in the rebirth uh, i believe that we are born again until our karma is completely purified and rudraksha is a very strong tool for karmic purification so i do believe in uh, our spiritual knowledge and uh, because if you look at it from a deeper level you will see logic in it you will okay. see logic. so i see a lot of time people wanting to mix science with religion and i truly believe science is a tool that helps us measure hmm. spirituality begins when the material measurement ends so i hope in my generation we are able to find tools to measure spirituality that would be a transcend of material and going into the spiritual world because that is something that i believe in today's generation because we are force fed things that okay if you can measure it then and replicate it then it is yeah obviously see science is something this is what you know so far like yeah. it's not there are endless opportunities i don't see like any like extreme scientists denying the existence of like god or anything they, they there's always a possibility that's what science says so i think spiritual aspect is something beyond that yeah. uh it's not like science can't figure it out it hasn't yet it yeah. may in the future Hopefully. so yeah and that would be extremely good and i actually want to play a part in it i actually want to and i'm working on researches in the scientific sphere to research more about rudraksha but i know deep within that the tools that we have today is just in you know it's they're just insignificant to measure these impacts which are life changing life altering people i have actually a very interesting thing i do have 
uh, customers who are scientists they're bio, mm. you know they're they're biochemical scientists they're leading researchers in the field of cancer recent customer of mine was a, a cancer specialist and you know people from nasa they're wearing rudraksha i have customers actually who have worked on nasa so wow. saying this with pride and these people understand where spirituality begins is where science is right now ending but i truly believe with our progression and with our society one day we will be able to merge the two with yeah, our understanding that would be amazing that would change people's life like because that would be a very huge convincing factor the factor. most sensible way to live yeah it would be it would amazing be. so just few like few minutes back you spoke about the gemstones how it's like taking over the culture of wearing rudraksha i noticed a ringer in your thing it has a gemstone i guess yes like but you said gemstones are like taking over rudraksha but you are wearing a gemstone so gemstone and rudraksha are both spiritual tool i don't discount the powers of gemstone gemstone is a amplifier if you wear a gemstone for a certain planet which is well positioned in your birth chart it amplifies the power but it cannot strengthen if you wear a gemstone for a weak planet thinking it will strengthen it it will further the weakness mm. so gemstone you have to be very wary about it however it does work what my point is is rudraksha and gemstone used to be worn rudraksha used to be worn where we need to take knowledge we can learn i said that it's a happening process spirituality it is good to learn but it is not good to eradicate what you know and learn the new things that is what is mm, very common got it we once we start drinking tea we don't need to bypass water hmm right that's like essential tea is a additional flavor huh. to the water but water is what is the source of life so our spiritual understanding our spiritual foundation is the key but if we learn that okay other civilizations have learned a certain tool can amplify then use it with caution i'm always a open minded yeah, just take the good good just things take the good but educate yourself you don't need what we what is happening today is we're fearful of what we know we're fearful of opening the pages of veda because if you see this and this is not a joke read the vedas you will see people saying don't read the vedas standing up don't hmm. read the vedas in the library don't read the vedas in your bed don't read the vedas in your room so just don't read it <laughs> so where do we read it right so is it that a human being needs to travel all the way to the temple find the most sacred place and read it and our temples are not designed like a library they are they are designed in a different way right yeah. so just read it you don't need to limit yourself so people are doing that they're restricting what we know our knowledge is being restricted and we're being open to only the external what i say is take the good from both and help yourself in your transformation in life i want to know the process of making rudraksha like how do you find it where do you find it yeah. how do you make the things the way it is like the final I'll, product I'll, I'll i mean is it okay to say it's yeah, a product yeah, yeah. yeah so let's let's because like i said spirituality begins when material ends mm -hmm. word is also just a tool of sounds that we use to communicate we don't have definitely it, it has an it, effect it has it has a limitation so let's yeah, use the sure. word product okay so i'll take you to a journey of rudraksha what happens is according to the devi bhagavat purana the inclination i'm taking you from like the bare meaning inclination to wear rudraksha comes from within Mm. it's very common and it's been written on the 11th book uh, on the 5th chapter or the 3rd chapter don't quote me of the devi bhagavat purana which has total of 12 books in it it's written that it's very common for people to not want to wear rudraksha okay oh. so it has to come from within that's the first journey then your journey for rudraksha begins right you'll be you'll come across nepali or indonesian rudraksha that's going to be the first question nepali rudraksha is spiritual it's what is mentioned in the puranas it's what we have been using from traditions but the cheaper alternative is indonesian because indonesian seeds look like rudraksha used mostly for japa used mostly for jewelries after you land on nepal nepali rudrakshas what you will do is you will have to know which rudraksha you want to wear now yes rudraksha does not have a negative impact however if chosen with proper guidance the effect that you want and seek can be amplified it's not that we're 
adding something to it. We're just recommending the best Rudrakshas for you specifically. To do that, we can do it two, two ways. First is... Okay, I have a question. Yeah. Like, I've heard this a lot, even you're saying it. Like, this kind of Rudraksh will bring you money. Yeah. This kind of thing will bring you health. Yeah. A lot of prescriptions like this. Yeah. I personally, as I said, I'm not very spiritualistic person. So I don't understand these things. And yeah. like, just like me, there are a lot of people who don't understand these things. Yeah. How is this possible? Like, yeah. uh, I believe it. I believe in energy. Definitely. Yeah. It has everything has an energy. Yeah. Yeah. So when you say like this kind of Rudraksh will bring money and this kind of Rudraksh will bring health, like what is the percentage we are talking about? Like yeah. anything, see, let's say I'm eating junk food all my life and yeah. I'm wearing a Rudraksh yeah. and I say like it will bring me health. It's not going to happen. Yeah. So anyway, what I do, I should be mindful of it. I think whatever you're saying, it can add up to it. But what percentage what we are talking about here? So, so that's a very good question. One of the things that is uh, the... Word wealth, mm -hmm. Lakshmi, mm -hmm. two different things. Wealth in today's world is just material fulfillment. Obviously. It's like bank account. Wealth in spirituality is what you have. So the energy of attraction is wealth. The attraction ability is wealth. Health is all about your ability to be mindful of your actions. If you're we wearing, eating junk food all day, your health is already on the negative because of the action. Because in Kali Yuga, you karmic centric yuga. Your karma is the biggest impact. You can't meditate and lose weight in this yuga. Mm. Very difficult to do. So maybe some enlightened being can do it. But karma of physical exercise and activities is what leads to it. But the karmic change happens from within. You don't start, you know, working out just like that. It has to have something inside and internal needs to click. What we're doing here is, with the use of Rudraksha, those energies are getting activated. It You still need to work. You can't sit down and wear Rudraksha mm. and say, okay, now everything is done. Let's go about it. You still need to do your sadhana. You still need to do your mantra. See, change happens from four cycles. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. This is the four Purusarthas. Dharma is all behavioral. First change has to be dharmic change. Dharma is behavior. Mm -hmm. It's the responsibility, it's the virtue. Your dharma as a educator is to educate people. My dharma as a Rudraksha expert is to consult people. A father's dharma is to be the father. A mother's dharma is to be mother to a mm. child, right? We need to be mindful of your dharma first. Second, artha. Artha is the meaning. What is the meaning that you are trying to take out of it, of the process? So any change happens from dharma, artha. Kama is the pleasure that you receive once you see that, okay, it's being meaningful. As I become father to my child, as I become an educator, I'm seeing people change. I'm seeing people you know, be better. That's the arthic change that happens. After that, it gives me karma, measure, you know, pleasure. But one thing happens. I'm done with this process now. I am wanting to do next thing. That's where you receive moksha from that cycle and go on to the next. Life is all about cycles. Rudraksha is an aid in that cycle of your life where you are able to go through, through this process of dharma, artha, kama, moksha and move forward accordingly. Therefore, I... And this does not rarely happen. It happens to people who are looking at Rudraksha from an outside view. Mm -hmm. Once you start wearing it, you will see karmic changes happening. You will start taking actions. For example, people with weak shani, and mm -hmm. I'm mixing a little bit of astrology with here, just to give you a little bit of information. People with weak shani, they're procrastinators. Very high procrastinators. You will be procrastinating and you will not be taking actions. Okay, I think I have that thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you're doing so much, I doubt it. But <laughs> at the same time... You wear 14 Mukhi and 17 Mukhi and you will start to see the changes that you experience and the, you know, actions that you start to take. So things start to manifest. Mm -hmm. Manifestation is a very famous word in today's day yeah, because yeah, of the yeah. Western influence. But Shiva, the origin of Rudraksha starts from manifestation. So what happened is in, in the beginning of time, there was a Asura known as the Tirpura Asura. Mm -hmm. To kill Tirpura Sur, all the trinities were extremely focused. Brahma tried it, failed. Vishnu tried it, needed assistance and wanted to invoke Shiva. Now what Shiva did is he meditated for thousands of years with his eyes open. 
he manifested a weapon known as the aghora weapon it's known mm. as the aghora weapon through this manifestation when the aghora weapon came live in his eyes a tear of joy dropped and with that tear of joy is where rudraksha begins okay so rudraksha is a manifestation of shiva for the betterment of mankind it's the only tool that has ever been manifested in any of our scriptures read it as much as you may that is manifested to change and give spiritual growth it is for the betterment and it is a tool that has both and it's been mentioned in the puranas it has bhukti and mukti both mm. bhukti is the material fulfillment mukti is the you know moksha mm. nirvana now why is that related how is bhukti and mukti related if you read shiva purana the first samhita is videshwar samhita if you read it what is mentioned is with the now people come to me and are fearful what if i be a sanyasi after wearing rudraksha mm. it is clearly mentioned to renunciate one must attain complete fulfillment of desire so through the desire fulfillment you might see it in that time stamp as oh this person is getting rich or oh, this person's material fulfillment is happening but what is that leading to that is leading ultimately to desire fulfillment and spiritual wow. growth okay again you need to be mindful that this fulfillment should come from a good act or else that fulfillment measure is never there you don't know where to stop you have thousands of crores 100000 crores but you don't know where to stop we don't know what the next step is but for people whose basic material is fulfilled i have seen a lot of these people they then tend to go into the spiritual quest and are able to devote their time and energy to building temples to helping people to helping build schools hospitals like dedicate their life to dharma like tata like, yeah. tata so these are the ways in which shiva purana mentions that we must live and to help you get through this rudraksha is one of those spiritual tools i say this with confidence that there is three things that shiva purana mentions mantra tantra yantra yantra are the spiritual tools which help you harvest energy rudraksha is one of them mantra is also very important and powerful for people who might not be able to get rudraksha you can start mantra sadhana don't stop yourself from okay i don't have rudraksha how can i be spiritually inclined you can do mantra sadhana mantra is that tantra is also in practice you do kriya yogas mm. you do a lot of yoga yoga originated from patanjali yoga sutra mm-hmm. and we have forgotten this art as well so like rudraksha most of our transformational abilities are getting lost and that is a very unfortunate truth yeah so true i think it's so true yeah. since you talk about spirituality a lot i have this one personal question for you yeah. so we in my hometown we have this uh, one temple which is like 1000 years old it's like a shiva temple uh my mom told me like i was doing like i didn't know what to do with my life i was like very miserable in my life i don't it's not just i have any particular problem but i was just so depressed i didn't know what to do i think I felt like nothing is working out for me at a point of time because uh, obviously I studied history I had uh, and my I I come from a very small village if even if you go to the town the whole city you know it gets completed in like 5 10 kilometers you have like hardly few you know colleges and all it's like a very small town remotely small town so you don't have lot of career opportunities that you don't have lot of higher education opportunities that you need to go out and I come from a again a uh, village mindset people they don't allow you to go out and study so i kind of you know felt stuck and i was like so miserable with my life uh, she told me to like uh, visit this temple like once a uh, once a week uh, somebody told me that it's going to help you get better so obviously i have nothing to do with my life <laughs> so i felt like i just want a way out yeah. so i started going to this temple uh, i was just i to be honest i'm as i told you i'm not a very spiritual person and all i always need logic in this i always want to see some logic in whatever we are doing so i started to go to this temple on a weekly basis like every thursday i i go to this temple and every time i go there something would happens to me and i'll tell you something i was expecting for an order uh, i was just doing this uh, menial jobs and all at that time i was expecting this order 
and that's gonna like benefit me like this very small thing but that was very big thing for me back at that time so i'm talking about a year back so i was expecting this order and the moment i stepped out of the temple like i paid uh, you know i paid respect and i came out of the temple the order came like i got the cling sound so then i was like uh, it's like a you know uh, recurring order you get it like every one at a time the next week i didn't get the anything the whole week the next week i came out of the temple exactly at the same place i got the order <laughs> i was like what the heck is happening here i need logic for for you like i i don't understand like god is doing this for you i don't I don't know like I don't understand this concept like the someone is sitting up there and watching you all doing things he's le- he's just making it happen for you I don't believe in these things but I also couldn't believe that this is happening I'll tell you one thing so I started doing YouTube by the time when I was visiting the temple since I'm like always like jobless I-, I wanted to do something since I'm good at this I wanted to do something about it so but it's not working out the YouTube obviously you don't get the success in the next day you start working but I was like so miserable with my life uh, I didn't have any money at all with me I'm I'm like a person who won't take money from my parents uh, I think the last time I asked my I asked my parents something was when I was in school I wouldn't ask my parents for anything so I just literally have no money at all so when you go to the temple I I buy this diya for for Lord na. So I used to at first I used to buy eight diyas. So I used to you know uh, keep it in for every god in the temple. Then it came down to five. I couldn't afford it anymore. <laughs> so I won't ask par- my parents money. I won't ask anybody for money. So next it came down to three, and somebody was with me in the temple that time. Um, that person told me like. Um, uh you have three na like for that that particular god i'm very like connected with i give him three diyas like every day every time i i go there so when it came down to three i just kind of close my uh, you know eyes i just go straight to him and place all the three diyas then the person told me like you have three why, why can't you just lit it up on for this god i was like i felt so bad so bad like i want to give this three to him but i couldn't give this uh, somebody said this i felt i don't know so bad i started crying that i don't know maybe it's all the things that you know piled up in the past i started crying so bad like so bad means extremely bad i couldn't hold hold back my tears i was I was crying so loudly in the temple sitting there. It's like a uh, not a crowded temple so it's not a problem but I was crying so bad. Uh I think the next day I went home as I, I kind of had this I I kind of had this conversation with God like I don't really talk to him like a person honestly but that day you feel so helpless with your life. I talk to him like I have nothing to do. I don't know what you have what, what the problem you have with me. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. It's just I I see I see no way out here. I'm just I just feel so stuck here, you know, within this uh city. I don't know what to do with my life. I just cried out so loud. I I was, you know, saying these things in my mind. The next day, uh I had around like 12,000 subscribers with me um at that that day. I didn't get monetization because I didn't have enough watch time for YouTube. The next day, uh, one of my videos started going viral, and the next week I visited. I told you na every Thursday I go. Yeah. The next week I visited, I had around like four uh, lakh subscribers. Wow! From twelve thousand to four lakh within a week. Yeah. So every day I used to get around fifty thousand subscribers. It all like went boom. Yeah. and it you know can you believe this if i say this to anybody i don't think anybody is going to believe it i don't i didn't even tell this to my parents that i cried and you know it all happened but you know it, it always something like this happens and there's this one day there's this company who contacted me like um i didn't have a team back then like everything i you know i do i i used to do it on my own let it be editing thumbnail any everything i used to do it on my own So I badly wanted a team. I couldn't keep up with the demand. You know, people. A lot of people started following me, but I don't have much content to put out. I used to post post like once in a week, and it's not gonna be you know consistent for a long time. So I wanted a team. So this company approached me, but their condition is like we'll take fifty percent of whatever your earnings is. Yeah. I think that's a lot. Yeah. But I I was not earning that much back yeah. then. So. Even still, it's not that bad. But yeah. back yeah. at that time, it's it's a it's your initial stage. You 
you just started blowing up and this company approaches you i thought okay it's a good option since i don't have a team they'll take care of all the work for me i'll just have to focus on the content and video i was going to sign this but i i told them like okay i'll tell you tonight i was going to the temple evening yeah. okay i'll make my decision so i was already visiting this temple for like more than 6 months it never happened uh, you always offer coconut now yeah. the coconut went bad that day i was actually thinking in my mind okay i'm going to say yes to them i don't know if it's right or not uh, just make it right for me so this is what i told them the coconut went bad uh, that kind of you know i took a step back i said uh, uh, I'll, i'll need some time and then i said no i'll i'll manage it on my own then obviously if now i think it's like a very worst decision i could have ever taken because yeah. the contract was for 7 years wow so 7 years of my life i would be working for them 50% yeah 50% of whatever i i do yeah. okay so this thing na every time i go to this go to this temple something good happens to me it, i always feel it does something for me it does protect me from the bad but my logical mind it refuses to accept it i know like something is good is happening with me i know like, like there's something there's something happening i i can't describe it but i don't understand it but i don't I, my mind refuses to accept it like maybe it's all a coincidence this is what my 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 mind says and i always have a battle between my mind and heart so as a person who's like more knowledgeable in spirituality how do you actually like see this this is like so crazy i don't think anybody is going to believe this but this is all true yeah. but how do you like how do you explain this to me just explain this to me i don't care about the viewers also just explain this to me how is this possible what is happening with me how is this possible see this is all what spirituality is all about right it's it's definitely definitely beyond comprehension for anyone who has not been a part of your journey who has not seen what you have seen who have not felt what you have felt the things that you have felt your emotion at the time when you cried out loud was probably to the purest extent and in a frequency which god could hear and he definitely heard that and he was with you is with you and like i say you know in a year where you have come without that extra boost of blessing and a spiritual backbone this is virtually impossible as to what you have achieved exactly like right? the incident i told you about it was on last february yeah uh and in february 12th exactly i yeah. got monetized and this february i hope i'll touch 2 million yeah so like it's some um, it's unbelievable it's unbelievable it's unheard of and today you are doing a podcast in rudraksha yeah see how the circle has come wow you know and another thing with regards to logic from the time of kindergarten all the way to your however much you study you have always been fed logic Hmm. you want to measure things okay you know this okay measure it know this measure it so we are bound to question questioning is very good but at the same time we must understand that not everything in your life your journey i can't replicate it the transformation that you went through i can't replicate that transformation i have to go through my own transformation we're all individuals if we're working on a glass and measuring the measurement of glass which is factory produced everything is same so hence logic works huh. you are different i am different my path in life my birth all the karmas i have done is different so i am a separate entity the only thing that can measure me is myself the only transformation that you have achieved through that temple is related to everything that has led you to go going to that temple not even the person who is walking to the same temple with you has gone through the same journey of life exactly so your transformation is individual to you this is exactly the stories i hear about rudraksha about the transformation that happens but when another person listens about it it's too good to be true exactly But, you see even i can't believe this let it yeah. be another person so i never even bother to tell anyone that this is happening with me but it's happening yeah i know yeah. something is good is happening but i fear this yeah. it's going to stop any time because so, maybe i don't i don't i don't accept it i don't like you know my my mind refuses to accept it to yeah. be honest the main thing i would say is to continue doing your karma if it's a coincidence so be it let's repeat the coincidence and keep happening let the coincidence happen some people tell me you know it's may, maybe a placebo effect 
you know mm. it's maybe a placebo effect i tell them if you can repeat the placebo effect for the rest of your life which you'll probably live for oh, such 60 dude, more uh. years let's repeat it let's stay on the placebo and die peacefully rather than be out of the placebo group and witness someone who's enjoying and laughing on a placebo so what i say is take your life personally your spiritual journey your transformation is very personal to you and you don't need to relate in everything you can't relate and you can't think about okay i this happened is it replicable is it logical it does not need to be sometimes you just let go and feel shiva starts with you feeling him you don't need to replicate shiva you don't need to replicate his blessing his relationship with you is completely different that's why he's god i it's not like us who have you know say we are the same and we have different relationship with jesus we try to make god ourselves but god has a different relationship and our connection with you your form of belief your journey in life and your transformation is very personal to you and the transformation that has happened you don't need to even share about it just need to feel it that's exactly what a lot of people go through and the reason they come to rudraksha they come to these spiritual quest is because seeking that transformation and that happens and it's very hard for the other person or third person to understand because to understand that they have to live your life which is unique and they can't live your life so i'm really uh, you know i'm really happy for you that you are experiencing this as we speak okay seriously this conversation became so personal for me because it's like i never shared this with anybody and it's going to be on air with a lot of people watching so i'm little hesitant about what they will think about me like they may think that i'm lying they may think that i'm i'm stupid or anything like that but I, as you said my whatever work for me i know it's for true and i don't know the reason but i'll just go with the flow now since it's all happening i'm like more honestly inclined towards spirituality like i want to know what is it like what is it to be that you know conscious of everything around you uh i also want to wear rudraksh but how do i pick the right one for me you said there are a lot of varieties uh the one i was wearing in my college it was a like a five faces one but since there are a lot of varieties there's a lot of mukis as you say how do i pick the right one for me yeah so that's you know exceptional question in terms of rudraksha there is a lot of rudraksha mm-hmm. but and no rudraksha is going to do you any harm okay. however we can see and evaluate your birth chart to make sure that we provide you with the rudraksha that gives you the best results for example it's known as planet strengthening there are certain planets in your birth chart birth chart is see look at it from a very simple and logical standpoint birth chart is a snapshot of the sky when you're born hmm. planetary elements sit on zodiacs but how do we like design this because I, i honestly i don't mean to offend you but i don't believe in astrology yeah. i maybe i never used to believe in yeah. to be honest but how does this people like calculate so, all that yeah so your date place and time of birth is how it's calculated yeah. uh, the data is actually sent from nasa the mm. team from the satellite imaging of the sky during your birth so that's very accurate so now i mean uh, what nasa sends it to the, my parents no no not your okay. parents <laughs> the software that is okay, used okay. to calculate this and okay. and then when software okay i have one more question the person who like you know wrote my like that Bar-chart. book astrology birth chart that thing he's not like a person who uses computer and all he's mm-hmm. like a person that that will be will, will call him jadak karanga jadak yeah. karanga means uh, he's like somewhere like a, a priest or some kind of person yeah but uh, he doesn't have the nasa details and all but how did he do it that is the epic question and uh-huh. that is the power of our vedas we can calculate the exact positioning of the planets in your sky and it can be compared to what the nasa images said wow and you, he can calculate that using his calculations now that calculation part has been really 
you know people don't usually do it unless they're you know sitting in a situation or a place where they're unable to because it saves them time now you have softwares like parasara uh, you know jagannath hora softwares like this which you can put your information date place time of birth and get a chart now chart is going to be very confusing and ambiguous to you but uh, you know a person who knows can see where the planets are sitting whether they are favorable where how the compound relationship is how the vimshapaka bala is what the mahadasha that you're going through is it just is a knowledge see don't use astrology as a predictive measure prediction can never happen using astrology because you can't predict your karma your karma is you know you do your karma i can't predict what you're going to do but using astrology prescriptive astrology is good meaning you can predict or see what the challenges this person faces for mm. example if their third house has a blockage they have difficulty expressing themselves now i can't predict that they will express wrong things i can just say that there is a little bit of blockage in the communication aspect what can we do to strengthen that right so that is very much accurate and doable why the astrology's belief has gone is because based on that information people are predicting the hmm. predictions are more their reading of the person i can't predict anything what i can predict and see is the weakness and the strength of your chart hmm. and i can see what are the planets causing that and i can help you with the selection of rudraksha not only me a expert any expert on anyone learn it can do it it's a learnable thing it's a learnable practice can, you mean, can learn it as well wow. it needs a lot of time 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 and effort you if you dedicate your energy towards this you can learn it and be better than me on this but you need to study and you can see okay these are the blockages that are happening the rudrakshas that are blessed with these deities carry these powers can help me with this and it illuminates you you said you go to the temple on thursday hmm the rudraksha that you wore was five mukhi hmm. five mukhi is a guru rudraksha wow. for the jupiter the day of jupiter is guruvara guruvara meaning thursday okay so wow. everything is connected no way. <laughs> right so the five mukhi rudraksha is a rudraksha for jupiter huh. it is worn to strengthen your jupiter and everything that we talked about started from guru for you on the thursday so similar to that we can look at why things are happening and you need to be very careful of using it you know using these kind of art people do misuse it people do invoke fears like i have kal sarva yog sade sade jati and they are oh, so fearful don't need I to be i think you got to translate that for me yeah so these are yogas okay so you don't need to be fearful what you need is basic guidance and these guidance act as lubricants to lube your life forward it is going to move you are going to move if anyone says you are not going to move forward without any of this knowledge lying but do you want to be on a train or do you want to be on a bel gadi right on a rickshaw that is up to you hmm. and if you have the tools why not utilize it that's amazing that's amazing you're just yeah. so good at it yeah so i think been talking for more than 2 hours right now so it's time to end yeah so so glad to have this conversation it's like one of the very very good conversation i had and it became very personal for me at the end so i'm really looking forward to have more conversation with you in the future perhaps hopefully by the grace of god i thank god and shiva for making this conversation happened uh, happen and i hope your audience gets something out of it and gets them closer yeah. to a spiritual you know transformation for themselves and it and i am blessed to be a part of it in any way in any f- uh, form that i may same here same here so yeah. glad thank you thanks thank for you. coming i'm really looking forward for another conversation thank you om namo shivaya bye bye